Friends, welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple. In this tutorial, we are going to solve HITU CBCS scheme network analysis questions of December 2016 January 2017 paper of module 3 of syllabus 15 EC 34. Friends, I prefer to emphasize on basic concepts strategy and thinking process rather than detailed mathematical steps. I am sure you are well equipped with relevant mathematical skills. Hope you will enjoy this travel. Let's go ahead. Friends, first let us answer the question on initial and final value theorem. In this question, we are required to state and prove both initial and final value theorems. First, consider initial value theorem. We know that initial value theorem helps to find the initial value of x0 of a function x of s. It states that x0 is equal to the limit of s x of s as s tends to infinity. To prove the initial value theorem, let us use the operational transform of first derivative. It states that Laplace transform of dx by dt is equal to s x of s minus x of 0. This you know. But by definition, L of dx by dt is equal to integration of dx by dt into e to the power of minus st dt within limits from 0 to infinity. By equating the right hand sides of both these equations and applying limits as s tends to infinity, we get limit of s x of s minus x of 0 as s tends to infinity is equal to limit of integration of dx by dt into e to the power of minus st dt limit as s tends to infinity. But limit of integration of dx by dt into e to the power of minus st dt within limit 0 to infinity applying limit as s tends to infinity is 0 because e to the power of minus infinity is 0. Therefore, limit of s x of s minus x of 0, limit as s tends to infinity is equal to 0, from which we get x of 0 is equal to limit of s x of s, limit as s tends to infinity. Thus, the initial value theorem is proved. Friends, next we shall consider the final value theorem. We know that the final value theorem helps to find the value of x of infinity of a function x of s. It states that limit of x of t as t tends to infinity is equal to limit of s x of s as s tends to 0. To prove the final value theorem, let us use the same operational transform of the first derivative. We know that Laplace transform of dx by dt is equal to s x of s minus x of 0. But by definition, Laplace transform of dx by dt is equal to integration of dx by dt into e to the power of minus st dt within limits from 0 to infinity. By equating the right hand sides of both the equations and applying limits as s tends to 0, this time we get limit of s x of s minus x of 0 as limit s tends to 0 is equal to integration of dx by dt into dt between limit 0 to infinity into limit of e to the power of minus st as s tends to 0. You know as s tends to 0 e to the power of minus st is equal to 1. So we get 
integration of dx by dt into dt within limits 0 to infinity. By integrating, we get x of t between limits t is equal to 0 to t is equal to infinity, from which we get limit of s x of s minus x of 0 as s tends to 0 is equal to x of infinity minus x of 0. By solving it, we get x of infinity is equal to limit of s x of s as s tends to 0. Thus, the final value theorem is proved. Friends, next we shall solve a second question to find i of 0 plus di by dt 0 plus and t d squared i by dt square 0 plus in the circuit shown in figure. It is given that the switch is closed at t is equal to 0. Initial value across the capacitor Vc0 is equal to 0. But what about IL0? It is not given. So, to find IL0 minus, we have to draw the equivalent circuit at T is equal to 0 minus. It is given that the switch is closed at T is equal to 0, meaning it is open at T is equal to 0 minus and further it could have been in open position for a long time or for an infinite time. So, at t is equal to 0 minus, circuit elements behave as though t is equal to infinity. Hence, at t is equal to 0 minus, L is short and C is open. Incorporating these aspects, the equivalent circuit at t is equal to 0 minus drawn is shown in figure. Observe the network. I0 minus is equal to 0 as switch S is open. So, IL0 minus is equal to 0 and IL0 plus also is equal to 0. Further, VC0 is equal to 0 and VC0 plus is equal to 0. Now, we are ready to draw the equivalent circuit at T is equal to 0 plus. We know that at T is equal to 0 plus, L is open and C is short and switch is closed. Incorporating these aspects, the equivalent circuit at T is equal to 0 plus drawn is shown in figure. Observe the network. We find that I0 plus is equal to 0 because L is open. So, I0 plus is equal to 0 is the first answer we obtained. To find di by dt 0 plus and d squared i by dt square 0 plus, we have to draw the circuit for t greater than or equal to 0. Note, we have drawn the circuit for t greater than or equal to 0, but not the equivalent circuit. Now, by writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the circuit, we get r into i plus l into di by dt plus 1 upon c into integration i dt is equal to v. But we know that 1 upon c into integration i dt is equal to vc of t. By substituting r is equal to 10 ohm, l is equal to 1 Henry and v is equal to 10 volts, we get 10i plus di by dt plus vc of t is equal to 10. This equation holds good for all time t. So, it also holds good for t is equal to 0 plus. So, by substituting t is equal to 0 plus, we get 10 i 0 plus plus di by dt 0 plus plus vc 0 plus is equal to 10. But we know i 0 plus is equal to 0 and vc 0 plus also is equal to 0. By substituting the values and solving, we get di by dt 0 plus is equal to 10 ampere per second. It is so simple, isn't it? To find d squared i by dt square 0 plus by differentiating the equation for the circuit obtained earlier and substituting t is equal to 0 plus, we get r into di by dt 0 plus plus l into d squared i by dt square 0 plus 
plus i0 plus by c is equal to 0 by substituting r is equal to 10 ohm, l is equal to 1 Henry, dy dt 0 plus is equal to 10 and i0 plus is equal to 0 and solving we get d squared i by dt square 0 plus is equal to minus 100 ampere per second square. Hope you understood it. Friends, next we shall solve third question to find the node voltage Va0 minus and Va0 plus in the circuit shown in figure. Observe the problem statement. It is given that the switch is closed at t is equal to 0, meaning it is open at t is equal to 0 minus before closing and it might have remained open for a long time or for an infinite time. So, at t is equal to 0 minus, the circuit elements behave as though t is equal to infinity. Hence, at t is equal to 0 minus, L is short and K is open. Incorporating these aspects, the equivalent circuit at t is equal to 0 minus drawn is shown in figure. Observe the network. Since K is open, the circuit transforms into a two-loop network as shown. Let I1 and I2 be the mesh currents assumed. Note, since K is open, no current will flow through 10 ohm resistance. Note that. By observing and writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for loop 1, we get 20 plus 10 equal to 30 I1 minus 30 I2 is equal to 5. And for loop 2, we get minus 30 I1 plus 10 plus 10 plus 20 equal to 40 I2 is equal to 0. By Solving both simultaneous equations 1 and 2, we get I1 is equal to 2 divided by 3 amperes and I2 is equal to 0 0.5 amperes. Note both answers are positive and IL0 minus is equal to I1. So, IL0 minus is equal to IL0 plus is equal to 2 divided by 3 amperes. Now, we want Va0 minus. So, by writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation from the reference, we get Va0 minus is equal to 20 into bracket I1 minus I2. By substituting the values and solving, we get Va0 minus is equal to 10 divided by 3 volts or Va0 minus is equal to 3.33 volts. To find V0 plus, we have to draw the equivalent circuit at T is equal to 0 plus. We know that at T is equal to 0 plus, the switch K is closed, L is open, but there is an initial current of 2 divided by 3 amperes present in the inductance. So, inductance will behave as a current source of 2 divided by 3 amperes as shown. Note that the network now has three junction nodes of which one junction node voltage of 5 volts is known. So, we need to write two junction node equations, one for node VA and another for node VB. So, by writing the node equation for node VA, we get VA minus 5 divided by 10 plus Va divided by 10 plus Va minus Vb divided by 20 is equal to 0. By solving it, we get 5Va minus Vb is equal to 10. Similarly, by writing the nodal equation for node Vb, we get Vb minus Va divided by 20 plus Vb minus 5 divided by 10 plus 2 by 3 is equal to 0. By solving it, we get minus 3 Va plus 9 Vb is equal to minus 10. By solving both simultaneous equations 1 and 2, we get Va is equal to 1.9 volts 
and Vb is equal to minus 0 0.476 volts. But Vh is equal to Vh0 plus, hence Vh0 plus is equal to 1.9 volts. It is so easy, isn't it friends? Friends, finally let us solve fourth question to find the Laplace transform of a given sawtooth waveform. The strategy will be to represent the given waveform in terms of piecewise defined functions and then obtain f of t and take its Laplace transform. So, observe the given waveform. There is a positive ramp of strength A divided by t units at t is equal to 0. Let it be f1 of t. Then f1 of t is equal to A divided by t into R of t. But at t is equal to t seconds, the given function turns vertically down. So, to bring the function f1 of t to trace horizontally, First, let us add a negative ramp of the same strength at t is equal to t seconds. Let this function be f2 of t. Then f2 of t is equal to minus a divided by t into r of t minus t. If we add f1 of t and f2 of t, we get the horizontal trace as shown. Now, to bring the trace to proceed along the x-axis, we have to add a negative step function of a units at t is equal to t seconds. Let this function be f3 of t. Then f3 of t is equal to minus a into u of t minus t. Friends, the three piecewise defined functions representing the given waveform are reproduced here. By adding all the three piecewise defined functions, we get f of t. So, f of t is equal to f1 of t plus f2 of t plus f3 of t. By substituting all the three functions, we get f of t is equal to a divided by t into r of t minus a divided by t into r of t minus t minus a into u of t minus t. By taking the Laplace transform of f of t, we get f of s is equal to a divided by t into 1 by s square minus a divided by t into e to the power of minus s t divided by s square minus a into e to the power of minus s t divided by s. It is so simple, isn't it friends? Friends. I am sure this tutorial has ignited some of your thoughts. If so, please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email. Thank you for watching this video.